Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Bigenhoe. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Don't sit in this Friday night. Head to a haunted house at the Renaissance Academy located in Phoenixville. The haunted house includes live trained actors, special effects, impressive sets, and of course, food. But if you get there early, you'll get the chance to be in a flash mob where actors will perform Michael Jackson's Thriller. Tickets are $10. Grab some friends and head on over. This week at Hope Community Church on Beadler Road in King of Prussia, there will be an inclusive open, open mic coffee house and community art show. Come join the fun and express your talents or just come to watch and appreciate others' talents this Friday night. Proceeds will go towards research and scholarship funds for creative therapy. For more information, visit templearts.org. On Monday, four Cabrini teams competed to make the best wing sauce as voted by their peers. Our own Kevin Bullioni was on location for the results. Can you ladies tell us a little bit about what this event was about? Wing bowl was basically based off the wing bowl in Philly. So instead of eating the wings, you get to make a sauce for the wings. And you get to, it has the same premise where it's a competition, you try to make the best wings. And it's just a really fun thing to do on a, on a day. I think it went very well because of the rain. I didn't expect as many people to show up, but a lot of people ended up showing up, so. And the winners are, the boys are back. All right, I am here with Location Zone, Greg Stevens with his teammates Brandon Menser and Mike Ponturio. Guys, tell me, how does it feel to win the Wing Bowl this year? If I may, Kev, let me, I mean, if I may. It feels great. I mean, a lot of team spirit, a lot of team heart. Mike, our captain. It's It just feels great. I mean, $15 to Olive Garden. 15 hold up each. 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 So can you say... Uh, team date? Yes. yes. Yeah, we can. <laughs> and with breadsticks? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unlimited. <laughs> now, what do you think about the competition? It seemed like stiff competition out there. A lot of fierce competition, a lot of great athletes out here tonight. Yeah, See, I will but we say, know, oh, I'm sorry, first. No, you first. I will say the really other clear. teams had some really good, uh, they had some really good sauce. They had some great sauce. Well, but, but we knew from the beginning we were going to win, so yeah. it's okay. Like, we came in here knowing we were going to win, even though we didn't even know it was a wing competition. Yeah, like, we thought we were just yeah, eating. We thought, we thought it was an like eating competition. We, yeah, that's we why came we unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to say, location, the whole staff picked you guys to win. So we had faith in you from the beginning. So We love location. Yeah. Can, can I say the sign-off? Location or die. It's Kevin, Mike, Brandon, and Greg, all location for location. Back to you guys for the we new We love staff. America. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to Rob for this week's sports update. In Cabrini sports, field hockey put forth a valiant effort this past Saturday against Gwynn and Mercy College, but it was not enough in a 2-1 loss. Carly Gruccio recorded the lone Cavs goal in the 53rd minute. What else are you going to do? Men's soccer ran over Valley Forge Christian College 10-0 on Tuesday, with freshman Bobby Sharp recording a hat-trick. Seven different players contributed for goals. Women's soccer shut out the Notre Dame of Maryland University 2-0 on Tuesday with goals coming from the two Danas, Dana Peterson and Dana Drake. Volleyball swept Keystone College three sets then on on Tuesday, winning by scores of 25-10, 25-15, and 25-8. Mother Nature decided to make the mistake of intervening with Cavalier Athletics, resulting in the cancellations of cross-country at the Shaney University Invitational as well as golf at the Muhlenberg P College Fall Invitational. In Philly sports, the Eagles lost another game on a game-winning field goal, losing to the Detroit Lions 26-23 on Jason Hansen's 45-yard field goal in overtime. This was the first overtime for the Birds since 2008, and they will go into the bye week with a 3-3 record. This loss resulted in the Tuesday firing of defensive coordinator Juan Castillo, who has been replaced by secondary coach Todd Bowles. The Sixers beat the Boston Celtics 107-75 on Monday, with center Spencer Hawes leading the team with 17 points. Not bad, considering he came in off the bench. Every year during the fall season, Cabrini men's lacrosse hosts a game against the lacrosse alumni. Let's check in with Kelly to see what went down. Hi, I'm Kelly from Location, and we are on Dixon Field right now, getting ready to watch the Cabrini and alumni lacrosse game that happens every year. There was recently a lot of good talent that graduated last semester, and they are back and ready to play. So let's see how it goes. Even though the game did not count for more than bragging rights and self-esteem, both teams played hard and didn't give up. The alumni started the game out with the veteran edge and held the lead going into halftime. The Cabrini Cavaliers came out strong in the second half as the alumni took a turn for the worse. 
It was hard work and determination of the senior Cavs that led them to a victory over the alumni. Let's see what some of the players had to say after the game. We're going to be here one day, but we're going to be with a great crew, guys. A lot more uh, better lacrosse players, too. You know, got a little it. sloppy out there. We're coming back and winning next year. Definitely in, in not as good shape as I was when I was on the other side. It's sitting around a lot in the summer. Yeah, but it's definitely weird. It was good to see all the guys, you know. After a long and exciting game, the current men's Cavaliers defeated the alumni 11-8. It was a good game, but the alumni continued their losing streak once again. It was all in good fun, but they're all going to have a good time tonight and celebrate whether they won or lost. Hey, on location, on location, <laughs> lacrosse team. <laughs> This week's location, Athlete of the Week, goes to Bobby Sharp of the men's soccer team for his three goals, totaling six points, in Tuesday's win over Valley Forge Christian College. That's all I got for this week in sports. Be sure to tune in next week for more Cavalier and Philly sport coverage. Now back to Val. A staff member for now disbanded United States Postal Service cycling team found that her job required much more than just working with the team. Her jobs included massaging the muscles of the cyclists, booking their hotel rooms, and preparing their food. Things went wrong when she became a part of trafficking drugs for the cyclists, one including Lance Armstrong. She once traveled from France to Spain to pick up banned substances for Armstrong. Her recent testimony helped the United States Anti-Doping Agency to ban Armstrong from the sport of cycling forever. Online voter registration becomes a growing issue in Maryland and Washington. These two states make online registration easy. Voters can register online and change their address information. According to the New York Times, the only downside is that all this information is available to the public, such as lists of voter names, birth dates, party affiliations, and addresses, which are all in the hands of campaign vo volunteers. This makes it easy for hackers to change the person's address, and the voter would never receive a ballot in Washington. Currently, both states are trying new ways of keeping voter information private while setting up disaster plans for when their systems are under attack. Former U.S. Senator Arlen Specter died at the age of 82 this past Sunday. Specter represented Pennsylvania for 30 years, the longest tenure of any U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania. In 2005, the senator was diagnosed with cancer. The senator died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in his home in Philadelphia. According to Senator Pat Toomey, who defeated Specter in his last run for Senate, quote, Spe Specter dedicated his life to public service and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Christine with your weekly entertainment update. South Park masterminds Trey Parker and Matt Stone have found themselves in an illegal entanglement. Parker and Stone are being sued over their character King Lollipop, which appeared in three different episodes in 2009. Xavier Wardclaw claims that they stole the character from its own show. The lawsuit alleges that South Park character King Lollipop is a hack version of Wardlar's Lollipop Forest character, the Big Bad Lollipop. I personally have never heard of the show, but have you? Let us know what you think on www.facebook.com slash location. Former bachelorette Ashley Aber will have quite a wedding video. Aber and fiance JP have signed a deal with ABC to film their marriage ceremony. The bachelorette Ashley and JP's wedding will air in December. It will include everything from Aber's dress fitting and wedding planning to the bachelor and bachelorette parties. Filming is underway for the next season of The Bachelor, with 24 women competing for the affection of Dallas businessman Sean Lau. The new season will premiere this January. While I'm sure Katie Holmes isn't ready to date just yet, she has told a few close friends that when she does, it won't be with any actors. Holmes is in no hurry to be tied down and enjoying the single life of right now, but when she does, she has sworn off any actors for her future. She claims that industry romances are officially a thing of the past. We'll have to see that Dawson Creek star really means what she says. Tweet us at Location PR to tell us what you think about celebrity relationships. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's go to Bethany for your trip around the world. In Pakistan, a 14-year-old girl, Malala Yousafzai, was shot in the head on her way to school. Malala advocates for a girl's right to attend school. On her way to school, her bus was stopped by a gunman from the Taliban who asked for her. He then opened fire, shooting the young girl in the head. She was on a ventilator and she had 50 to 70% chance of survival. 
The young girl currently is in stable condition at a hospital in Birmingham, England. Occupy London activists outside St. Paul's Cathedral are up in arms against corporate greed. Following in the footsteps of Occupy Wall Street in New York, Occupy London protesters expressed feelings about capitalist excess and social inequality. Four women chained themselves to the structure of the church with a note written on an umbrella stating, quote, throw the money changers out of the temple. According to Fox News, St. Paul's does not agree with the protests. They hope they can sit down with protesters and find a solution to their current issues. Palestinian Mayasun Kuwazmi is a candidate for the municipality of Hugh Brand. This mother of five lives in a conservative West Bank city. Last month, she formed the first ever all-feminist list in the Palestinian territories. And on October 20th, they will be candidates in municipal elections. Her platform is for gender inequality. Equality. She believes it takes both a man and a woman to make change, not just a man. Every day she challenges cultural norms, but because she lives in a conservative society, it's only okay for the women to be a teacher, but not okay for them to run for elected office. If she wins a seat in the city council, she will run for the mayor, but registering her feminist list is a victory alone. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Bethany Vigano. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini.